Tonight, live at the Inspire Theater on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Fremont Street, in the heart of fabulous downtown Las Vegas, we present the Downtown Podcast. Starring your host, Dylan Jorgensen, Nakaya Berry, Jason Outlaw, music by yours truly, DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. Tonight's guest, from Beazle Bug Fit, Lee Lanier. Performance coach, author and speaker, DJ Allen. Musical performance by Santiago. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Missy Elliott's choreographer, Mr. Jason Outlaw. DJ Lenny Alfonso, huh? Let's hear it for him. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. How you doing, Lenny? Today is a good day, sir. Yes, yes, yes. So, so did you do some traveling this week? Yes, yes. I went to uh, San Miguel de Allende in uh, Mexico. So I don't even know how to pronounce that, but that's awesome. It's a magical All right, place, cool. yeah. Yes, that's, that's cool. Did you go like to the beach or anything like that? Well, it's inland. It's, it's a real uh, uh, artsy community known for like arts and crafts, you know, the indigenous oh. people. So it's arts and crafts. So cool. That's cool. Yeah. All right. That's cool. Well, that's, that's, that's good. Well, we're glad to have you back. Thank you. Good yes, to be indeed. Back. Give it up for DJ Lenny. Traveling near and far and still coming back. Coming back. Yeah. All right. And once again, we want to thank all you guys for being here. We really do appreciate it. And here is what's in the news. <laughs> At the zoo, for the first time, chimpanzees have been observed caring for a disabled infant. That's right. Justin Bieber spent the night at the zoo. <laughs> he did. He actually spent the night at the zoo. Biebs. <laughs> I don't know. Um, a recent study shows that 92% of people in the Philippines have uh, actually, did you know that? Yes. Yes. Believe it or not, it used to be 97%, and then we went on the air out there. <laughs> <laughs> Got to balance things out. Yeah, yeah. Keeps, keeps sliding down. We took it all down. <laughs> by, the end of this, by, the, by the time I get done with this monologue, it's going to be like 89%. It just keeps going down. Uh, <laughs> NFL superstar Marshawn Lynch. Everyone know Marshawn Lynch? Uh, he gave a McDonald's employee $500 to go buy a new pair of sneakers. That's right. One thing you never hear any athlete say is, here, here's $500, start a college fund. <laughs> never happens. <laughs> never happens. <laughs> He's like, and 500 bucks, is it just me? Or does 500 bucks buy you like a pair of shoes and some crack? Is that? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. yes. I'm, pr I'm pretty sure it does. I'm pretty sure it does. <laughs> <laughs> Not in that order, right? Eh? Yes, that's right. A man was carrying a sign outside of the, the Cleveland Browns uh, athletic complex asking for a tryout, and he actually got a meeting with the GM of the Browns. That's right. Yes, indeed. The Browns said, we always pick up bumps holding signs on the side of the street, especially because they can hold on to the sign without fumbling it. That's the Browns. That's the Browns. Oh, poor Browns. <laughs> you, you a Browns fan? You a Browns fan? Broncos. 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 All right. Broncos. All right. Wow. All right. Let's see who's Broncos fans next year when Peyton Manning's not there. I'm just saying. <laughs> just throwing that out there. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, remember, remember this name, actually, because this lady is up for Mother of the Year. OK? Her name is Carla Lee. She is the mother of a, a nine-year-old who was murdered, and she took the money that they got from their uh, campaign that, to, to like bury him, and she bought a new car with it. Yeah, yeah, mother of the year, if you ask me. Uh, when asked, she said, it could be worse. I could be Kris Jenner, who pimped out her kids. <laughs> it's true. Is, she, is that? We should be right at late? 80. What is that? Is it late? <laughs> We should be right at 89%, I, I think. Feel, yeah, I think it's 89% now. <laughs> yeah, I feel judgment from like here, kind of maybe a little bit on this side. I don't know. Not quite sure. Um, studies say that cats, uh, your, your actually house cats, would kill you if they were bigger. That's right. Yes, that's what studies say. Um, cat ladies everywhere are skeptical, but men everywhere know that pussies will kill you. 
will. <laughs> Ask Lamar Odom. He knows. He knows. <laughs> did, I, did I say that? That wasn't, yeah. that wasn't on the teleprompter, I don't think. I don't, so where was that going? I don't know where that came from. Um, <laughs> a bride spent eight months and $70 crocheting her wedding dress. Yes. Yes, crocheting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, reports are it doubles as an ugly Christmas sweater. <laughs> Some of those things. <laughs> and in the future, I'm pretty sure she's going to be a, a single lady. I'm pretty sure. So it's one of those things that happens. Yes. Y you'll take her. Game on for that guy in the shorts in, in winter. There you go. This guy never gets cold. He never gets cold. He's wearing shorts. He don't even care. He's like, breakaway pants, bam, got him. Done. All right, good. Um, <laughs> um, Cocaine that has been cut with the veterinarian drug levamisole Le um, is actually a culprit in a flurry of flesh-eating diseases that have been discovered in New York and Los Angeles. That's right. Zombies everywhere are pissed. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I'm like, ah, don't say anything about zombies. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Uh, a 60, actually, there's a $63 million lottery ticket that is unclaimed. You guys hear about this? $63 million, yes. I needed to bury my child, said Carla Lee. Yeah, I told you to remember it. I told you to remember it. Just throwing that out there. Uh, the, the actor who, who did the voice of Charlie Brown in several Peanut specials is pleading guilty uh, on Tuesday to threatening to hire a hitman to kill Sheriff Bill Gore. You guys hear about this? Yeah. What he said is he wanted to re release a new Charlie Brown movie called Charlie Brown Shot the Sheriff, but he did not shoot the deputy. <laughs> Good work. That's Good a little work. Bob Marley. Yeah. That's, that's how I dance to reggae. I do this. I do this. All right. Uh, saying goodbye uh, to a very odd attraction in Seattle. Seattle is scraping the gum off of its gum wall. Yes, yes. Keep in mind I said gum wall. Keep that in mind. OK. Um, it's, it, and it's, also, it's actually going to be almost three tons of gum. Yes, yes. They were asked what they were going to do with the wall afterwards. Um, and they said, hey, you know something? Don't worry. It is going to be upheld with glory. Did you guys catch that? Did you guys catch that? He caught it. He caught it. They caught it. All right, cool. I got fans in the back. Love you guys. All right, cool. Good for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right. Um, 40 years after it was introduced, Sony has finally put Betamax out of its misery. That's right. As of 2016, they are going to stop making Betamax videotapes. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Oh, man, what am I going to do now, said Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> you guys remember that? It's like my favorite. That's my favorite. Yeah. It's my favorite guy ever. I was like, I want an uncle like that. <laughs> yes. All right. So has anyone heard of this app called Rumbler? Yeah. Yes, yes. There's, a, there's an app out called Rumbler. It's for, um, it's for people that like to meet up and fight, OK? A participant, a participant um, said that Rumbler is set up just like a dating app, except the dates happen, that, except the dates happen in uh, parking lots and back alleys. Yes. Oh, that's where I meet all my children, said Subway's Jared. Oh. <laughs> Boom. Give it up to DJ Lady Alfonso. Today we have performance coach, president and founder of X's and O's of Success, DJ Allen. Thank you. How you doing? You good? DJ Lady, we're not related. Two different DJs, <laughs> Two DJs. not related. Thank you so much for coming. Hey, you're welcome. Glad to be here. We were at Inspire Theater. I mean, this is like the best kept secret in Vegas. Yes, right yes, here. Yes. Love the energy in downtown Las Vegas. Spoke at Life is Beautiful a few weeks ago. Bill and I closed my show. That was pretty exciting. How is speaking? Uh, life is beautiful. Phenomenal. The energy right now in downtown Vegas is unreal, and life is beautiful is something absolutely amazing. You know, I mean, I think I'm, I'm born and raised, born and raised in Southern Nevada, and, and coming down to downtown Las Vegas and being a part of that was something absolutely special. It shows what's going on in this community. This is where it's at. Absolutely. 
And you've never been on the turntables before testing out your DJ skills? Oh, no, I'm not a DJ like that. I can't. No? Not no one. With that twos. name, DJ. I know. It's, it's too confusing. <laughs> I'm just not that smart, though. I'm just not that smart. So tell us, what do you do? You know, a, a performance coach, uh, speaking author, and uh, worked in sports a lot. And what we found is the power of teams. And the, the power of teams in life is the same as in business. Uh, excuse me, the power of teams in sports is the same as in life. It's the same as in business. So what we do is we work to maximize the potential of individuals, do a lot of individual coaching. But mostly we work with teams and businesses and organizations and families and, and get people to come together. And if they come together, then they can actually maximize their potential. So having a ton of success in business and organization and sports throughout the nation and, and just having fun telling the good stories and spreading the word. Are people grasping that you can actually relate sports to life? Oh, it's a, absolutely. I mean, someone we've got a Broncos fan out here, yeah. uh, right? I mean, you think about the, the thing that made Peyton Manning such a great leader on the field would make him a great leader as a CEO. It would make him a great leader if he was a police officer. Leadership is leadership. Teamwork is teamwork. But it's a lot more fun to talk about sports than it is to come in and say, let's talk about teamwork and, and leadership. And so absolutely, and people who aren't even sports fans grasp it, because when you start, we talk to a lot of high school kids, we say, what teams are you on? And some people start talking about all the sports, but then you have the first person who says, well, I'm in drama, does that count? Yeah. And I'm varsity quiz, is that a team? Yes. You know, and, and what about my friends? What about my family? And when you think about it, life is made up of teams. We're all on teams, and, and do we play the roles? Do we really want to help our teammates? So yeah, people are loving it. It's, it's fun. And speaking of different roles, you as a president and founder, are you chasing after titles? You know, it's funny because we talked about that. You know, people love titles. They love them. I've had on my business card before head visionary because I don't want to put president because people want to sell me something. You know, we judge people on titles. That's what we like to do. I don't have a big name. I don't have a, I don't have a title. I, don't have, I wasn't a coach. I wasn't a former athlete. But I have a story that I like to tell. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of times we do. You know, we, we sit there and we compare and we look and we see what, what title you are. And you think about it when you come somewhere, it's like, well, what do you do? You know, and I see your card and the first thing I'm doing is I'm not thinking about you and how can I help you in learning who you are as a person. I'm thinking, how can you help me? So we got to get over that. You know, but that's human nature is to, to, to look at those titles and to chase that. So I'd like to say I'm not. Um, I know I was in my past, for sure. So with relating sports to life, what specific topics do you focus on with your motivational speeches? The biggest thing that we talk about is jealousy and the, world, the, the role that jealousy plays in our life. Uh, it's a topic that you don't see it a lot in leadership studies. It's a topic we don't talk about a lot in life. But quite candidly, jealousy runs this world. And, but it's a dark secret for a lot of us. And, and I had to confront things in my life that you go forward. And sometimes, you know, the people who we're closest with, our best friends, brothers, do we really root for them? You know, because we're comparing ourselves all the time. So I've had some things that happened in my life. And I struggled with it for a long time as a young businessman and got involved with politics. Um, I'd like to say I was a good community member. But at some point, jealousy runs your life. And you begin comparing yourself with others. So we talk about that a lot. And it's uncomfortable for people, but actually, it, there's a lot of freedom when we find ways, and we use sports to talk about it. Because sometimes, if you and I play the same position on the team, and like basketball, where you can sub in and out, am I always rooting for you to play well? If you don't play well, I'm going to get more playing time? That doesn't always happen. It doesn't always happen in life. So how did you personally overcome jealousy and envy? Well, I still fight it. I mean, that's the first thing I always say. I always like to say I'm a recovering hater. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, you know, right? But, you know, 10 years ago, but the biggest thing is sad is 10 years ago when my son was two years old, he was diagnosed as autistic. And when you're told that your son, and think about it, he's my only son, and I, I profess to be the sports guy, my, my son's going to play sports. This is who my son's going to be. And all of a sudden, I'm told, well, you know, your son will, will never, you know, never say I love you and mean it. You know, probably live with you for the rest of your life. And he's never going to play team sports. You know, for years, I struggled with that. Because all I would do is look around and compare my three-year-old son with this three-year-old son, my four-year-old boy with this four-year-old boy. And, and that's a recipe for disaster. And it actually took me understanding that, well, we just want Daniel to be the best Daniel. And I'm not going to compare him to another three- or four-year-old. And it wasn't until that happened that I started beginning to understand, well, not only about Daniel, what about my daughter? You know, it doesn't matter. She doesn't have developmental disorders. I'm not going to compare her. In fact, I want to root for her friends. 
I want to root for other people. And then the final one it turned on was me. Instead of comparing me to other people in my field or comparing me to people I grew up with or comparing me to people in the community, who cares? Just have me be the best me. Instead of comparing myself, why don't I just root for the people around me? An amazing thing happened. Yeah, right? And, and I struggled with it. But an amazing thing happened is we started living our life that way. Our friends, our family, community rallied. And, and life's been successful, business is successful. And my son right now, if he'd walk in here today, uh, you would never know. Does he play any sports now? He plays baseball, he plays basketball. Right. Uh, yeah, we're black. But it's good. But, but you know, it is, uh, it's, it's, and that's why sports is so important to us. But sports and, and, and Daniel's story uh, just changed our lives, absolutely changed our lives. So everyone can use a little motivation. Yes. So we're going to play a game. We're going to go through a couple pictures of some not so fortunate events. Yeah. And let's see if you can make a positive twist. OK. I, you know, I apologize. These aren't funny. <laughs> I apologize. We're going to, OK, that's not good. That's uh, not supposed to happen. Let's just skip this one, because I don't think there's any coming back to this. <laughs> OK, DJ Lenny, we can go over that one. OK, this one right. This was out Lake, Lake Mead about two years ago. All right, he has uh, nowhere to go. I mean, doesn't know where to go. But our world the, is doomed. <laughs> you know, play with an underdog's margin of error. You know, we talk about that where if you think about sports, the way an underdog wins in life or in, in a game is if they have this focus. They have no margin of error, so they play with a focus. Well, you think about how champions win in life and in sports is what if you always played with that focus? He couldn't mess up. Hmm. You know, so he played with the underdog's margin of error. What champions do is, even when they may not be up against the odds, they always have that, that focus of an underdog. So always play with an He's underdog's margin of focused. error. He's focused. He's <laughs> focused. He needs to stay up there. OK, that's good. He's good. squished. <laughs> He's squished. <laughs> Nowhere to go. Surround yourself with people who will support you. You know, we look at that as bad. You know, again, competing. A lot of times what happens with, with entrepreneurs and young business people is, is if we're not secure enough, we surround ourselves with really weak people to make us look good. Surround yourself with people better than you in other right areas. On. All right, well, thank you so much for coming. Unfortunately, that's all the time that we have. And where can we check you out at? Check me out, uh, xsandosofsuccess.com, or on Twitter at xsandosofsuccess.com. That's it. Or on Twitter at d underscore j underscore allen, A-L-L-E-N. All right, we will definitely tweet you. And I'm sure people will have, want to have you speak for them. Outstanding. Thanks Thank for having you. me here. You're welcome. We are going to nerd out seriously with an amazing 3D graphic designer. So please put your hands together for Lee. Come on out. Yeah. Lee Liner, what up? Actually, you didn't work for Pixar. Three background. Yeah, you are 3D. Yeah. yeah OK. Screw that two-dimensional No, interview. no. Here, I've been working in uh, animation since mid-90s. Shrek and Ants and some of those old films. Okay. And also some Disney films. That's awesome. Um, OK, yeah. so uh, I want to talk about the opportunities in online education first, and then we'll go to it. So you uh, worked with lynda.com, so people yes. could go online and actually just learn how to program with Maya and some of the other compositing tools. And you've written six books about 3D programming. So how do you feel about the way education is if you want to get into um, 3D design? Design currently and doing it yourself online? There's a lot of opportunities to learn. I mean, there's a, many, many schools over the world uh, that teach 3D animation. Uh, by the same token, there's tons of things you can use to teach yourself. So uh, either one's good. The, the great thing about teaching yourself, though, is it's much, much cheaper. Yeah. But you have to be a self-starter. If you go to a school, at least you have the instructors who are professionals you can work with. So, yeah. but, yeah. so like, what's, what's it like inside your brain? Are you like, yeah, like bigger gun and more muscles and like, then just like alien face? Like, how are you? What's going on in? I, I dream area? really strangely. All my dreams are very surreal. So yeah. they, they could be 3D animation. Which is probably why I went into it. Maybe, yeah. Maybe yeah. it was like predestined beforehand. I think so. OK, yeah. I, I know there's some funny 3D words. Um, I think NURB is one of them. NURB What's is a, a good NURB? one. A NURB is a non-uniform rational B-spline. All right. Ooh. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> I, 
You know what? I bet that's the only time anyone's ever applauded that's for that. In like the entire only time history. in the history of the world, I think. Yeah, it's a type of modeling surface for modeling. Yeah, any other funny ones? Uh, like I, I don't know if they're funny. That's probably the funniest one. There's like keyframe and I don't know. There's a bunch of technical ones that are not very exciting. Double though. entendres for sexual things? Anything? Yeah, yeah. No, well, correctly viewed, everything is lewd, right? So yeah. I guess you could make a... Oh, extrude? Like what about extrude? Oh, extrude? Yeah, like yeah. that's extruding <laughs> deeply. And, <laughs> okay, so... Watch you, out. <laughs> you, were, you could be doing uh, a lot of stuff in bigger cities, but you're actually mm -hmm. living in Boulder right now, and you've created something called called the um, Damn Short Film Festival. Yes. Um, could you talk about why, first off, why you're in Boulder and what this festival means to that city and why you created it? Yeah, I've been around for a while, and my wife and I decided to move to Boulder City to find a cute, quiet, you know, small town that was still close to some major cities. And once we got there, we thought it'd be great to start a film festival. And so we're going into our 12th year. And the Damn Short Film Festival screens about 120 short films from all over the world uh, for about four days once a year. And we're coming up again in February. OK. Yeah. And what's the qualifications to get into the film festival, or what are you looking for? Uh, yeah, submission process, uh, we have some online submission services we use. But anyone can submit their film, one to 40 minutes. We're looking for every genre. We're just looking for really interesting, good films to show the local audiences. So it like doesn't have guys. to be 3D animated? It could be anything. OK. Are, anything. Is there a focus on special effects, or the stuff no. that your background is in? Or I mean, you just... we always make sure to have one or two good animation do you blocks. Like, do you like movies without effects? I, yeah, I watch anything, okay. pretty much. No, I mean, it's all good. I get tired of it. Like you go in with the wind or something? You'll no, like, no, it's you'll, good. You'll go retro on it? No, uh, Turner Classic Movies is always a good thing. But no, every genre is yeah. good. Just good storytelling, you know, something creative. Okay, do you have, uh, you know, I'd love to hear a story about somebody that maybe was from Las Vegas or from Boulder that uh, got into your film festival and had success. Is there anything that comes to mind? There are some, I can think of the uh, Nix brothers who are from Boulder City that grew up there. Okay. And they were in our festival the first year, 12 years ago. And they've gone on since to, they moved to Denver. And now they're in LA directing a, a series called the Grolix, I think. I can't remember the name exactly. But they're directing an original web series. And their first film was at our festival in Boulder City. Oh, that's so, really cool. All right, give yeah. it up for the locals, huh? Yeah, definitely. That's really cool. OK. Um, so, you know, if, if somebody doesn't, you know, they have an interest in 3D animation, but they're maybe just got their feet wet a little bit, what does it take to get to a professional level? And more importantly, what are the tools that, like, real 3D compositors are using? Like, what are, what's, the, yeah. what's the cool thing to be in well, on right now? Uh, if you, for 3D, it's like Maya is a big software. If you're compositing, it's like After Effects or Nuke or they have all sorts of crazy names like that. But the, the thing you have to do if you want to go into this field is be work really hard because there's a ton of other animators out there right now from all the schools, all the professionals have been working for like the last 15 years. So you have to be really aggressive and, and learn every day, work every day, and just try to be as professional as possible. Gotcha. Yeah. So, OK, so I saw, I think it's called, Inter you remember Interstellar? Did you see that movie? Yes. Like they rendered that. We're out there like Houdini. But a lot of times it's particle simulation, things that uh, simulate uh, what's going on in the physical world. Yeah. In terms of mass, inertia, and all that crazy stuff. OK. Yeah. And how do you take a 2D image and make something 3D fit into it, right? What is that process like? Well, 3, 2D, like Disney, you just draw it, right? You draw right. 24 frames a second. 3D, you have to build everything in a virtual world. So everyone here has played video games, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, I mean, obviously, everything in those worlds has to be built from scratch. There's a modeler who builds the models. There's a texture. There's a lighter. So like a feature film will take 100 people at least two years. Uh, 50 hours a week. Really? Everything has to be built from scratch, essentially. So it's not fast. It helps to have a computer, but not fast. Do you think there's a lot of job opportunities in it? Like, does it seem like a growing field? Oh, yeah, it's definitely growing. I mean, the, the video game industry alone uh, outperforms Hollywood. They make more money. It's billions of dollars. Really? So there's a lot of opportunities. The, the only disadvantage is there's a lot of people who want to go into it, so you still have to be aggressive and hungry yeah. to get into it. So what's the most impressive 3D thing you've ever seen? Like, is it in a video game like Grand Theft Auto or in a movie or? Uh, the video games are always impressive. They tend to be cutting edge. Like, what was uh, the last time you just got I think uh, uh, Gravity I was really impressed by. Oh, OK. With the yeah. incredibly long shots in gravity and space and all that. That was really nice. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah. OK, so I want to end by talking about the um, Damn Short Film Festival. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, it's, it's uh, Movember starting now, and a lot of people are into oh. the mustaches. Is that, this is, this is before that, I'm guessing, right? This is pre-hipster. This is, goes back to oh, the- Oh, you're uh, not a hipster? Well, I get, I- Oh, yeah. I, I might be now, I don't know. 
The, the younger okay. people can decide that, but no, I've had this since the late 90s. Well, there, there was yeah. a, an outdoor event this afternoon uh -oh. called Market Row where a lot of yeah. people went, and we took your face and blew it up on the size of a poster <laughs> and started getting people's opinions about what you would look like without no. a mustache. No. <laughs> and then we had them play a game of pin the tail on the donkey, but with a mustache on your face. Oh so can we go ahead and roll that footage? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you'll find this good. We have a little scruff all around. I think this guy's really chill. We take him out to dinner first. It was a hug, not a make out. Um, no, it's not. We've removed your chest hair. We're in a scruff, no, but if it's even all around, it's good. If it's just a mustache, it's no scruff, then no. There you go, now you're getting it. You want to give him a kiss before you put the mustache on? Yeah. Oh, you want to give him a kiss after? Oh, this one's close. Oh, were they blindfolded? Or? Yeah, no, yeah, they're blindfolded, yeah. It's pin the tail on the donkey, we spin them around, they get dizzy, and then they go and put it on. Oh, 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 sorry. She's feeling my mouth. It's great to see him put her hands all over your face. Yeah, yeah. you never know. Not this one, but this one. Oh, so close. Oh, close. Sorry, I'll try to like. That one really cool. Yeah, yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. That was the strangest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we had a lot of conversations about your face today. No doubt. The Damn Short Film Festival, where hey, they can submit. Uh, Damn Short Film Festival is coming up in February, February 10th to 13th. Submissions are almost done for this year, but we usually have about six months submission period. But go to damshortfilm.org, D-A-M, because we love uh, the dam, because we have the Hoover Dam. So damn short org. Yeah, F FCC, if you're watching. Yeah, That's yeah, what it's for, for the TV. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, let's give it up. Thanks again, Lee. Oh, it's a pleasure, yeah. Thank you. Stay here for one second. And for you guys at home, we're going to be right back after this commercial break. And we're going to be with a 14-year-old who I believe is the reincarnation of Bob Dylan. He's dead, right? Oh, no. no. Oh, uh, yeah, he's just like him. It's the same thing. <laughs> Burke, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Santiago. Thank you, guys. We just want to take this break to thank our sponsor, theironyard.com. Life is too short for the wrong career. And at theironyard.com, you can go from beginning to expert all in one place. The Iron Yard exists to create an exceptional growth and mentorship experience for people and their ideas through a tech-focused education. So check out theironyard.com, change your career. And thank you for watching the Downtown Podcast. This is Dylan Jorgensen signing off. Hey. Our next musical segment, sponsored by Iron Yard. Learn to code in Las Vegas. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Santiago.
Ladies and gentlemen, once again, let's give it up for Santiago. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our show. We'd like to thank all of our guests this evening. Thank you to our cast and crew, to our live studio, studio audience, and to all your podcasts at home. Remember, you're all welcome to be a part of our live studio audience every Thursday night at 9 p.m. right here in the Inspire Theater on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Fremont Street. Come party with the cast and crew for the official after party right here in the rooftop at Inspire. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Downtown Podcast at DJ Lenny Alfonso. Thank you. Salamat, salamat. Peace, love, be kind to one another. Woo.